Journeys Ahead to Lineage Chapter 5 Lots of Explaining to Do Written and narrated by T.S. Proart With a collection of frosty steps and footfalls, Void, Kor, Sika, Harmony, Lee, and Talos all marched side by side, while Jida and the rest followed behind at a distance, ensuring that the found sparks had their space. The large group had all exited the water stream, and now traversed across a less smoky section of the forest. Void, Kor, and a few of the other sparks were quiet for a chunk of the walk. None of them knew how to approach the situation. The talk, as though they hadn't been separated, or thought the other dead for the last decade. It was uneasy, truth be told, but someone had to crack the ice. Why didn't you come and find me? Void quietly asked as he gave his older brother a questioning side-eye. We all waited for a transmission. Kor replied as he looked down to his brother with a sense of regretful sorrow. For over a year, we all waited for an answer that never came. We thought you and so many others to be dead. Shoving his metallic hands into his pant pockets, Void narrowed his sights to the snowy grounds and proceeded to kick a rock forward. Mother and father couldn't come with me. They took me to a one-charge portal and... Wait, 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 are they... Void perked up with a light in his soul as he whirled his head towards Kor and the rest, who didn't have the same reaction, rather a sorrowful one. I... I was going to ask you the same, but no. No, they are not with us. With hope fading, Void turned back forwards with a defeated haze in his eyes, knowing now for certain the fate of his parents. And their sacrifices for me was truly their end. <sighs> Void regretfully sighed out before feeling Kor's arm wrap around him once more. I didn't get a chance to see them after me and Sika left for work. Do you... Do you know what... What was their sacrifice? The older Novison asked in a shaken whisper. Like I said, we found a rift station. It had a one-way portal only. A glitch came upon us and they... They sent me through as that monster. Void explained before falling silent once more. They even Kor to just comfort him in return. Looks like they're finally talking. Nock brought up as he walked alongside Jida in little steps. Oh good, I was worried they may have been bitter. The blue and orange tinted robot stated in a lower volume while everyone else just watched on. Guys, you gotta remember, that's Void's brother and his people. Jada reminded as she watched two sparks chat. I know we all know his story, but from what Void's told me in private, he was always way more torn up about his family's death than he let on. Of course it's going to take a moment for them to chat. Just let's let them be for the time being. Jada reasoned with a serious tone in her voice. She herself still couldn't believe her eyes but knew full well how important this was to Void in the moment. Void, I know this may come off as rude and unjust to ask, but could you explain to us just how you got to where you are now? You were but a boy when the glitch attacked. How did, where did you go through that portal? How did you get here? Sika inquired, leaving Void to ponder for a moment. As long as you guys explain the same for me. He replied, getting Kor and the rest to nod their heads. Of course. Lee chimed in with a hop and flutter with her wings. 
pulling his hands from his pocket and looking up at falling snow. Void released a clouded breath into the air before beginning from the top. After mother and father pushed me through, I found myself living off the streets for a while, scavenging for food, begging for money, until one day, I came across another set of glitches attacking innocent people. Right then and there, I fought them. I fought them out of hate and anger for what they did to us. Void revealed while slightly clenching his fists. I swore revenge and made a vow to hunt every last one of them down. I did that for five whole years. Void continued, reflecting upon his miserable time of searching, struggling, and all the pain. Yet, my rage soon fell to that of honoring our people. My fight wasn't just for the sparks, but for all the innocents. I swore to never let another reality fall like Sabaheim, always reciting the quote of our people, for those we lost, and for those we honor. Kor finished off, being entranced within Void's story. You talk as though you either failed or completed this goal. What happened? Talos finally spoke in a dry tone of voice as he and the other sparks fell into a curious manner. Would you believe me if I were to tell you that we actually stopped them? Stopping in their tracks with gasping breaths, Kor and the others turned their bodies fully towards the small spark with widened eyes. Wait, you actually... Who's we? Harmony demanded no, with an astonished expression and quivering tone leaving her mouth. Turning to the side and raising his arm and palm out, the blue spark gestured to the woman in front of everyone in the back, and simply answered, Them. Turning their sights towards Jida and the others, Kor tilted his head with an inquisitive expression, leaving the musician to stop mid-stride and halt the others behind her. Jida, everyone, come here. Void asked towards his family with a small beckoning gesture in his hands that left them all a bit nervous. Carefully trudging up, Jida stood next to Void and wrapped her left hand around his right, all while now beginning to walk and talk again. At the five year mark of tracking the monsters, I found myself entering this dimension this city called Aurora, where I met the love of my life. Void explained as he set his sights upon Jida with a blushing smile. Are we going over our origin stories? Inquired the orange-haired musician, whose hair flared with that of a campfire's glow. Not exactly. I just brought up how you and the others helped me stop the glitched. Void applied while Kor squinted in a continuous stare at the musician. Miss, uh, Jida, may I ask, your hair, is that cosmic fire I sense? The older Novison asked with a curious manner as he pointed his finger to Jida's noticeably bright beanie-covered head. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah. I kind of have the powers of space fire coursing through my veins. <laughs> It's hard to explain. Jida awkwardly and quickly explained before rubbing the back of her head, all the while Kor tilted his face with a perplexed expression. She actually helped me figure out how to stop them. Turns out they were all nestling in Salvaheim. There was a whole mirror space underneath the world's feet too that I never knew about. That's where they came from. Void went on, while throwing his free arm out to the side. Together, we all united and... Before Void could finish, Jida chimed in and closed off the spark's words with her own way. We kick some serious ass. She stated, making a punching and kicking motion, awkwardly though, given her stomach. Closing his slightly dropped mouth and nodding, 
Core glanced between the group of oddballs and then back forward to the other sparks. I... That's... That's... He began to speak when Sika spiked up with the other girls in shock. Wait, are they truly dead? She inquired. That would explain the season activity for the last few years. Talus whispered to only himself, leaving Void to give a positive shrug. It's been ten years now since there's been an attack. I'd say that in terms of being dead, they're well six feet under. I even got their leader's remains, back where I live. Void revealed in a positive tone, leaving Kor to just close his eyes and breathe gently with relief. That... That is a heavy weight lifted off our shoulders. Alice and Evelyn will be over the moons when they hear about this. Kor, Sika, Harmony, and Lee smiled with disbelief, completely shell-shocked to the news. Mother and father always saw greatness in you. If only they could see your accomplishments now. To these words, Void couldn't help but look down with a gentle warmth of love entering his chest. It was good to know that, especially coming from someone he admired. I'm now assuming after that, you and Jida here settled down. Lee speculated as she craned her sights back to the entire group while giving a slight squint upon the guitarist. Eh, not exactly. A bunch of crooks have been rampant in the city, we all got wrapped into a bunch of BS with that for the last few years, and Void nearly died several times. But it's been great. Nox suddenly babbled, making Kor shake his head with a sudden influx of confusion. What? I... I... We... We beg your... Pardon? He asked with a sudden flicker in his orange eyes. <laughs> uh, that's a story that needs some time to explain. All you should really know is that I've sort of been a bit of a quote unquote superhero, kinda, around these parts. Void awkwardly explained before raising his free hand up and sparking surges of spark essence from his fingertips and horns. Superhero? Sika beckoned with an accompanied raised eyebrow, leaving Void the shrug again. More or less a vigilante. I've been putting our abilities to use in order to keep these streets safe. Void went on as Kor took notice of the blue surges of power beneath his jean-like jacket. Fascinating. You got a name, hero? Harmony questioned as she stared at Void with ponderous eyes. Blue Bullet. I, I didn't ask for it. The people call me it. But the real hero is her. Ford replied as he nudged Jida's shoulder. Heh. <laughs> sure. Well, after that whole ordeal with the monsters, we started dating and soon got married. Had a beautiful honeymoon and... Well, we're now about to be parents too. Surprise! You're either going to have a niece or nephew. <laughs> Jida awkwardly replied while tapping her belly like a set of drums to all the sparks to lie at surprise. Maybe except for Lee. Listen, it's been a crazy few years since Salvaheim, but I've found my place here. My life. I'm sure you all can see that. Void expressed as he glanced down the Jida's purple glowing belly turning and stopping the group's walk yet again. Kor and the other sparks eyed down Jida's stomach before glancing back up to her stare. So she is pregnant. Harmony boasted as she squatted down and smiled towards the guitar's belly. You're gonna be a dad? Oh, by Darfian Sphere. Uh, way to make me feel old. Sika gasped with a clutch to her chest while Lee and Talos seemed mixed on the sight. May I? Kor asked as he slowly reached a hand out. <laughs> Go ahead, Orange. Your family, too. <laughs> Orange? He asked with a heartfelt smile as he carefully extended his fingers forwards and rested them upon the glowing purple and blue aura. 
a tickling sensation then began upon his fingertips, as the light within Jida was drawn to the spark's touch, signifying that the blood connection was there. Softly sighing with a grin, Kor stood back up and shook his head, and then turned back to his brother, admiring who he now was and the life he had made for himself. Kor was only one word in that moment. Proud. I'm Atira. This whole time I thought you'd be dead. When in actuality, you were doing all this. Avenging, surviving, continuing our lineage. I... Kor was lost for words. He couldn't convey his emotions in the moment. He needed more time to think on it all. Yet, there was one more thing he needed to say. I... We missed you, brother. That's all Kor could let out before kneeling down and placing a hand upon Void's shoulder. So much. With a wincing smile, Void reached out and returned the gesture, placing his hand upon Kor's shoulder until the two of them leaned forward and touched foreheads. As did I. I, I still can't believe you're all alive. Releasing and stepping back from one another, Void raised his arms up and crossed them with a growing, curious stare before popping the question. Now, your turn. What have you and everyone else been up to for the last 15 years? And again, what was Abaddon? Before Kor could speak again, both Atlas and Evelyn leapt down from the trees and upon the group, landing firmly on both their feet in a tense manner. Ow! Bases! Knock shout in fright, falling in the Tucker's big beer gut. Oh, <laughs> sorry little dude. Atlas apologized with a gentle reach towards Nock. Scan is complete. Abaddon wasn't able to release any M radiation upon transformation. We dissolved it just in the nick of time. Evelyn explained before turning down the void and his wife. Ah, hello again, my friend. Jaina? She greeted before rubbing Void's head. M radiation? He questioned in a deep wave of curiosity, making Kor and his buddies look at one another and then back. I believe it would be easier to explain once we reach our ship. Trust me, there is a lot to discuss. Kor said again before turning and gesturing for everyone to follow him. This way, the reform matter shouldn't be too far up ahead. He called, leaving Void and the others to look on at one another in a baffled stare. Reform matter, Tucker repeated in a curious tone while adjusting his survival pack. It's the name of our ship. Sorry for the rude entrance, by the way. It was out of our control. Alice replied as he extended his legs and walked like a spider above Void and his crew. Holding each other's hands tighter, Void and Jida stood close and followed the sparks, curious to see where this was all going. For a few miles more, the now massive group traversed through thickets of snow before finally coming upon a large, tree-split clearing. It was all smoke and rubble with no visible ship to be seen. You may not see it, but the reform matter is right before your eyes. We had a cloak to avoid detection from this world's residents. Again, we deeply apologize for the crash and scare. Kor revealed before lifting up and clicking a few buttons upon his arm. This, in turn, caused a bright light to suddenly shimmer to life as a massive, spark crest doorway opened before all. We know it's laying on its side, but the gravity fields within will refocus you to an upright position once inside. Sika assured before approaching the glowing door and leaping inside disappearing behind its golden, glow-like entrance. We promise it's perfectly safe. Just expect to be a little bit dizzy. If you need the puke, just go over the rails and let it loose to the energy blow. Allison explained before him and the other sparks crossed through as well. How did you guys make a ship this big? Kor's little brother asked as he and the others approached with a found sense of awe. 
All questions will be answered. Come, welcome to the reform matter. Kor introduced with both his arms raised before turning and walking through the entrance. This is the craziest thing I've ever done. Let's go! Koch shouted as he raised both of his arms up as though he were in a football stadium. Well, when your cousin is Jida Woods and her husband is Void Frickin' Novason, you kinda just run the crazy, it seems. Knox sighed out as Pofnu was the first to trot up and leap inside. Last one in is a rotten egg! She shouted with a playful attitude. <laughs> well, you saw the fox. First time for everything, right? Saw of reason with a shrug while holding Tucker's hand. Let's not waste any more time then. Void finished as he and Jida approached the bright entrance. With the others close behind, they crossed through into the large camouflage ship, disappearing from world view. Stepping through to the other side of the ship, Void, as well as the others, shielded their eyes for a moment, for allowing their vision to adjust upon the interior of the so-called Reformatter. Once it had all settled, the people of Earth fell to a state of complete astonishment as to what lay in wait. Whoa. Void gasped as the other sparks stood defiant. Before them all was the vastly wide and tall interior of the spark ship that appeared to have jumped out of a sci-fi tale. Massive and shiny silver walls stretched up and around the area, connecting and forming sharp shapes. These metal structures all acted as floors and rooms that looked to expand for many stories. These metal pathways lined the walls and space around that ended up connecting in one way or another. All these formations had a reflective tint that pulsated with rays of orange and blue energies within the seams. Everything was designed to be in a circular shape, like the rings of a slinky curving upwards and downwards. The craftsmanship was like that of home, Void thought, giving him a deep sense of nostalgia. Within the center of all these parts, rooms, and pathways, was a glowing beam of yellow and black light that stretched all the way down to a chasm that Void could only speculate that have been the strange needle piece below. Little cubed robots flew around it with fluttering transparent orange wings, carrying machine pieces as well as metal trinkets. They seemed to be repairing the ship's damaged form to the best of their ability. They were a unique build, everyone thought, blocky and lanky, especially the jet who tried waving at a few. Kor, what is all this? Void asked as they all began to walk across one of the large and reflective metal platforms. Hope, is all Kor applied with before walking everyone to an end segment that pulsated with a purple haze. Once all stood upon its form, Kor clicked a few buttons upon his arm and sent the floor below their feet to rise up into the air revealing itself to have been a levitating platform. Oh, goodness. Sarf hooted out as she stayed herself against Tucker. Oh, boy. Void mumbled as he still had a fear of heights even after all this time. <laughs> Startle ya? Sika asked with a smug expression towards the thorn and spark, who softly chuckled back with a nervous grin. <laughs> yeah... Actually, what do you mean by hope? Void asked as he gazed upon his brother once more, while everyone else continued to look around in awe. This is what me and the others have been up to for the last decade and a half. Crafting this machine in hopes to... Well, it'll be easier to explain when we reach the top. Kor replied, leading Void to tilt his head in a curious manner. You've been avoiding the question a lot. Is it really that much? Looking the stare forwards in a deep sense of thought, the larger spark slowly craned his head down and replied with a set of words that made Void's mind buzz with an even heavier amount of curiosity. More than you could possibly imagine. 
Stopping atop one of the highest floors, Kor took the lead and guided everyone out and aboard a much larger sector piece. This one was designed in a more circular shape than any of the other platforms. It had tons of different areas constructed along the tall walls. Glass windows from all around revealed what looked to be labs and testing areas of some sort within, all beaming and glowing with neon shining lights. One room glimmered blue, another orange, and some even with sets of hot pink. Large tubes also stretched in and out of their walls, all pulsating with similar auras of power that looked unreal towards Void and the Earthlings. Void, I know that we may be coming off as vague or unresponsive, but I need you to follow my word here, just to understand. Core began as everyone eyed a large centerpiece that jutted out of the floor. It was a massive glass container that sat glowing with swirling light and dark energy. It held a power that felt to radiate a spring-like breeze for all those who stood before it, being a mixture of both shivers and heat. Then, Void felt it once again, that sense of familiarity and nostalgia. It was coming from the massive tube of unknown power. Yet, it was then Void and a few of the others took notice of something else. It was a sort of shuffling blur that ran from one lab room to hiding behind the bright glass container. What, what was that? Jada asked with a startled vocal tone. Turning his gaze downwards, Void set his sights upon where he and the others saw the movement, and then curiously glanced at Kor, who had a similar reaction as himself. Ha. <sighs> Perfect timing. He mentioned before he and Sika walked forwards and knelt down at the massive container's left side. Void, there's someone I'd like for you to meet. Kor began, getting everyone to look in his general direction. Looming at one another, both Void and Jida glanced with curious eyes before the two of them approached Kor and Sika's side as well. Hey, sweetie. We know you're there. You can come out. It's okay. Sika quietly beckoned, speaking in a softer and more collected voice as she peeked her head more so to the left. Raising an eyebrow, Void slowly got closer to his brother's side and tried to see who or what they were talking to. It's okay. They're friends. The way they were both speaking felt similar to how they once spoke to Void in his youth. It was both familiar yet altered in a different sense of the word. Come on out, please. Kor continued to ask, giving whatever it was behind the container the courage to step out from the shadows. What Void and the others saw sent a sudden wave of emotions through their hearts. Void especially found his eyes and mouth widening in disbelief to what emerged. With small steps, a tiny figure came into the light. It was a little girl, a young spark. This little sparklet wore a mixture of yellows and purples. It was a lavender pair of short-cut overalls that rested upon a sunflower-shaded sleeve shirt. The girl even wore matching yellow rain boots to accompany the look. Her head and skin pattern was also unlike anything Void had ever seen. The little girl's natural skin was that of a light shade of purple, yet had a large yellow round off stripe going down her forehead and in between her eyes. The little spark also had big yellow and white irises that were furled down in a nervous expression. Four rounded horns rested atop her head, yet none sat at her cheeks, being replaced with freckles instead. Her biomechanical body was also along the lines of Kor's more refined look, being more humanoid with shapes of metallic purple that match her skin color. The last thing Void and the others took notice of was a strange and goopy creature within her arms. It was a teal, bug-eyed looking thing that had seven orange orbs floating above itself. Whatever it was, it appeared to be the little spark's pet. Void, Jida, this is your niece, our daughter, 
Joby. Kor finally revealed before him and Sika stood back up upon their feet. With wide and shocked eyes, Void couldn't take his sights off the small spark. She was an adorable but nervous little thing that caused Void's beating heart to warm once more with a sense of compassion. What? You... You have a kid? He questioned in a taken aback tone while looking to Kor and Sika, who simply nodded and gestured for Void and Jida to approach. Oh my god, she's adorable! Jida choked out before covering her mouth with both hands pressed in a prayer-looking manner. Slowly taking a step forward, Void gently got down upon one knee and locked his eyes with Joby's. The little one looked both confused and nervous to the sudden appearance of people, so Void found himself to be acting in a more calming manner than usual. Hi. He greeted with a growing smile before reaching out his hand with a fatherly akin tenderness. Hi. The little girl mumbled before taking a small step forwards. It's okay. We're not going to hurt you. We swear. Void worriedly replied as Jida spoke up. Well, why aren't you just the most adorable little thing? She now greeted with a smile and hand outstretched. With one little step after the other, Joby nervously walked up before her aunt and uncle, and at last, smiled. Uh, hi. I'm Joby. And this is Gluppy. The little spark fully greeted, as she held her globby dog or cat, whatever it was, up for the group to see. Gorp. It said, while its left eye began to droop down along its slimy body. Hi. I'm... I'm your... Uncle. Void slowed his words upon feeling the weight of reality setting in. He was an uncle. Uncle? Joby asked as she got closer to the void and placed her tiny metal hand upon his forehead. My uncle? She questioned again while looking at the core and Sika. Uncle Void, dear. Sika affirmed to Joby's gasping smile. <gasps> uncle! She repeated again, this time with a wide grin, nearly making Void swallow tears again. Hey, and an aunt! I'm Jida, but you can call me Auntie! The guitarist happily exclaimed as she scooped up Joby into her arms. The little spark now began to laugh and squeal as Jida began to dance in place in sheer joy to the occasion. Nock and the rest of Earthside could hardly believe what they were seeing, while the other sparks just enjoyed their reactions. Core, I. W when was she born? How old is she and... Void trailed off before noting that Joby looked rather different compared to her parents. She's ten, but there's more to the story. A new voice chimed in, getting everyone to turn their heads. Rolling in with a one-peg-legged wheel under half came yet another spark. He was old with tan-colored creams making up his mechanical body. His skin was a low shade of brown-gray, that was topped off with long, sharp horns and a four-eyed smile. What? Wait. M Mr. Cogson? Void gasped in shock as the old-timer rolled up with a chuckling manner. Void recognized the spark when he was in school. It was one of his teachers. This left the blue boy shaken in place. In the synthetic flesh, Marak greeted recognizing Void from many years back of teaching. I had thought the transmission messages from your brother were joking, but here you are, dear boy! Alive! Alive! Lunging forwards, the old man embraced Void in a tight hug, all while Void himself remained shell-shocked. Matir's grace, I... I don't believe it! was all I could say before Kor began to speak aloud. Yes, Mr. Cogson is right. Our girl is ten, but... 
there's something you need to know. Turning, Korra reaches arms out and gestured for Jida to hand him his little one. Complying, Joby was returned to the older spark with an accompanying nuzzle onto his side. That's when Kor dropped a twist upon their curious hearts. Joby is no natural born spark. She has mine and Sika's DNA, yes. But she was. Kor trailed off as his daughter looked into his orange eyes. She was created by science. A sudden silence felt to wash over the room from those words. Had Void and his family heard that right? Was what Kor just said actually the truth? Wait, wait, wait. Created by science? Void inquired with a hard stare as a wave of confusion washed over his and the others' minds. What do you mean by science, Uncle Kor? Pofnu asked while crossing her arms and flushing her tails in deep thought. We won't sugarcoat it. I'm not speaking fancy or anything like that. We created her with science. Kor repeated before turning and placing a hand upon the container of glowing light and dark energy. With this stuff here, the key to our future. Went on the older Nova son as him, Sika, Joby, and all the other sparks stared into the vat of liquid. All approaching, Void and the others found themselves being entranced in this strange energy, watching as their reflections twisted and bubbled within the s'more-colored looking glow. What is this stuff? Void asked as he too placed his hand atop the glass, feeling ever drawn to its power. It's matter, Void. Light and dark matter, to be exact. Kor finally revealed, watching as his face began to swirl and spin within his reflective haze. Light and dark matter? What's that? Jida curiously pondered as she and the others turned to look upon Kor. Before the big spark could speak, another, more authoritative voice arose with a shimmering golden shine from behind. It's what we sparks are made of. It's what resides within every living creature. It is the essence that makes up the goods and evils of a conscious being's soul. It's life in its most energized and usable form. Looking back, everyone watched with squinting eyes as a giant rift of golden starlight allowed for a figure to cross through into their world, a figure that was about 10 feet in height. For those of Earth, they thought they were seeing an angel. But for Void, he felt his heart drop deep into his stomach, as a feeling unlike anything else coursed across his soul. What? He gasped in disbelief upon taking in this being's features. Features he had seen in so many statues and old tales that came from his old home. The figure was a female, tall and fit, with a humanoid akin body. Her outer self was a mixture of lavenders, blacks, and gold-plated steels that looked to form an alien-akin dress across her waist. She had long arms that ended in sharp, nailed fingers that glinted a reflective purple haze off the matter vat's light. Her head was more human than anything else upon her, covered in these same metal plates and dawned with three massive horns upon her head. Two were on each side of her skull, while one sat at the front, and a double set of tiny ones below the cheeks. Yet, there was something off about this being. The left side of her body, head, chest, and arm more specifically, was covered in a dark, wriggling slime. Dark matter. This muck looked to cover the left eye of the angel, leaving her right to look back with a golden shine. From her shoulders, sprouted a fourth set of spines, and behind them, levitated floating mechanical wings, the right light and the left of dark. The last thing Void took note of was the glowing eyeball of energy within the being's chest. That too was a mix of light and dark. 
In a gasping breath, Void took a step forward as his being too approached, knelt with a smile, and reached forwards with her hand. Impossible. Void whispered as the goddess caressed his cheek with a nature so gentle it was on par to his mother's. Void Nova Sun, you survived as well. In a state of bewilderment, Void found his breathing to stutter as the rest of those from Earth stood in absolute silence and awe. You... You're... Void choked out as all the other sparks approached to his side. Was planning to slowly ease into this one, but you can't deny the lady her nature. <laughs> Kor chuckled as he eyed the angel down. Void, everyone, meet Lady Matira, the mother of all sparks, and more importantly, the matter birth. Kor introduced as the goddess continued to kneel at eye level with everyone. She came to our rescue after Salvaheim fell. Seeker revealed with a smile, while Void continued to stand in absolute disbelief. I... I... The blue crested spark felt like a broken record. Out of everything in life, this one, this was something he had never expected to come across. It was his god. It was a literal legend in the flesh. An old tale come to life. As the spark's brain attempted to piece everything together, he could only ask one simple thing. You're... You're real? Was all that was inquired, as the tall being fully stood back to a levitating state. Of course, my dear. She confirmed. Void looked to the ground now with his eyes and thought. This was their savior, their watcher, a being who was supposed to look out for them all. And yet now she appears before him? Void was struggling to understand. He couldn't understand. All this time he had thought himself alone. Yet she was here with his brother with other sparks. In a moment that should have been filled with excitement and awe, Void felt something else. Anger. You... Where have you been? You... You saved them, but, but not... Void began to ask with a saddened stare upon his god. In response, Matira's gaze looked to throw down into a saddened expression before she turned to the side. Oh, little one. She said before looking back to Void with a regretful stare. We had no idea you were out there. Your brother and his friends, they had sent days worth of distress signals, ones I could reach. If I had known you were out there, I... I would have come for you too. Matira explained as Void's mind felt the flip in all sorts of ways. But you're... you're my god. You, you don't have a sense for if I was... Void babbled with a shaken breath. No, unfortunately not, little one. Our connection is through creation alone. In truth, I fear that other sparks may be out there, just waiting to be discovered. Believe me, my dear, if I had known you were alive, I would have found you too. Matira did her best to explain as she reached a hand out and wiped a small tear from Void's taken aback eyes. Wait, you're the goddess Matira? Jada asked as she and the others of Earth approached, leaving Matira to look upon them with her curious eye. The mother of Sparks, you must be the others I've been told of. Matira greeted as she eyed down and smiled upon Jada's pregnant belly. You must be the mama of the spark I sense within. She gestured the Jida with a nod. E yeah, that's me. I'm the one carrying a spark. <laughs> You're really pretty, by the way. 
Jada replied in a nervous manner, as the goddess gently rested a finger upon her belly. As are you, she replied, before chuckling through the sensation of Lloyd's baby kicking back. <laughs> well, this is officially the most insane day of my life. Knox day with a scratch to the back of his head, as the others remained as silent as a midnight mouse. Wh What's going on here? What is all this? What's with the machine? Joby, you! Void now asked aloud in a cold sweat, with both hands outstretched to Matira. What is this? He pleaded again, as Jida now carefully wrapped her left hand around his right again. Throwing her brow, Matira strained her back and began to levitate towards his matter vat, whilst at last beginning to fully explain what all of this had been. As you know, my kin, Sparks, started off as mere mixtures from both the light and darkness that radiated off all realities. It is how I, Matira, came to be. The goddess started while placing a hand to her chest. With all my power, I created my children, and from all their power, they created the angels and demons who made the rest which eventually became you. Matira explained as she now placed her hand upon the massive canister. Upon learning of our people's fall from my kin, I knew something had to be done. I was too late to stop the purge, too late to save many. Now, I have brought it upon myself and all those who I know who are left to right the wrongs of the Emperor you heroes righteously slayed. Great work, by the way. All of you. Matira went on as everyone looked to surround her like a bunch of little kids. If I still had my power of creation after forming my children, this mission would have been a piece of cake. Unfortunately, that power to create life has dwindled. Looking into her reflection, Matira sighed before placing her forehead atop the glass. <sighs> Even so, there's always still a way to create newfound life. Approaching with curious stares, Nock, as well as the others of Earth, stood beside Void before the small mechanic began the question. What do you mean by create newfound life? All while Void's curiosity continued to spike. Our life force. Matter. It's everywhere. Harmony spoke as she leaned upon Lee's head. We ran many tests with its power. It started off as simply studying its form, to realizing that we could create expansive plant life by injecting its essence into the seeds. Coxon answered as he began to make wild hand gestures and missed everyone's words. After that, we soon began to expand and customize this ship we escaped in, making it larger, stronger, turning it into a massive testing ground as we discovered more and more about the matter every single day. All with Lady Madeira's help. <laughs> Lee squealed and giggled with joy before brushing Harmony off. Soon, we were able to create even more life, one being the creature you see in Joby's arms. Kor then stated, causing everyone on Void's side to gaze upon the kid with astonishment. The more we learned, the more we began to realize how closely our DNA matched our original biological essence pattern, said Evelyn, who now crossed her bladed arms. Till one day, your brother and his girl attempted the craziest experiment we've done so far, Alice added before Cor revealed the bomb-dropping detail Void and the others were slowly assuming the bee. We decided one day to mix our DNA with the matter before you all, and after many, many failed attempts, we eventually created our greatest accomplishment yet. That being Joby, a spark, our daughter. Jaw dropping with a profound look, Void quickly approached his brother before asking in a mixed set of words. 
Hang on just a moment. Are you telling me you actually create her with your DNA uh, along with all that? Void asked, gesturing towards a large canister of matter that continued the glow. It took hundreds of attempts, but yes, with the power of collected matter and a guiding hand by Matira's knowledge, we were able to create life. Ten years later, me, Sika, and the others have been trying to do the same in a less DNA-spliced way. A natural way Matira had once done. Korra revealed before Matira finally stated what exactly she and the others have been doing all this time. Void and friends, what this is, the reformatter, all these labs and tubes of energy, it is all to study and find a way to bring back what has been lost. We're trying to bring the sparks out of extinction. It was as though a bomb had gone off in Void's and everyone else's heads. The spark couldn't process what he had been hearing. Bringing back the sparks? Was that even possible? Wait, 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 whoa. You're... All of this, you're... You're actually... Void found himself stumbling again before Jida stepped in and spoke. How would that even be possible? I mean, clearly it is, but on such a grand scale? How did you guys even manage to get all this matter anyhow? Jida inquired, leaving Matira to continue in her words. The reformatter is of my child's design, Sabrath, the divine tinkerer. She revealed, it is built to draw in both forms of matter from selected spaces within all realities. As we speak right now, matter is being carefully pulled from this world into our machine, fueling the power cells that we are using to hopefully revive the lost. The goddess elaborated as she fully turned to look back upon the others. Wait a second, that's not going to hurt this reality, right? Void asked, leaving Kor to shake his head. No, of course not. It's by mere molecules that expand once entering the system. This reality won't be hurt in any way, shape, and form. I can assure you. Core reason before Void spoke up again. Okay, I, I, I'm I, sorry. You're all actually uh, going to attempt to bring our people back through th through all this? I, that's c kind of insane, don't you think? Void asked Kor, who simply sighed his words in response. Chobi is proof that we can set things right. After Salvaheim's downfall, I constantly told myself that I should have done more. We should have done more. But with Matira and her guidance at our side, I feel as though we can. More research needs to be done, of course. More matter on both sides needs to be collected for data. But we have the components to start a new for our people void. A new age of sparks! Kor excitedly exclaimed as he gently shook his brother's shoulder. However, I fear now that we're losing data by the minute. We weren't supposed to crash. Kor now worriedly expressed before approaching the massive container and then looking down at the large control panel to its side. We were attempting to teleport the reformatter into the next place full of matter. Which was this dimension? Unfortunately, an engine blew. Coxon reasoned as he wobbled in annoyance. What do you mean by losing data, Mr. Kor? Cock questioned as Sika approached the older Nova Sun and transformed her hand back into that weird canister mode. With it, she shoved its three spiked end into an open hole upon the control deck. The purple aura that had been stashed within that got shot or sucked into its opening causing a large flash of lavender to spark within all the glowing tubes, panels, and lights within the reformatter. Once settled, it was followed up by a positive mechanical noise, akin to an elevator alerting upon floor arrival. As Mr. Cogson said, an engine blew, possibly overloaded with energy, and we ended up crashing into this reality by some shred of a miracle. But in the process, we lost our nine what we call, uh, matter conductors. 
Coral elaborated as the ship's regular colors reverted back to normal, now with a more positive and brighter glow. The monster, Abaddon, that you encountered, was one of the conductors having taken form. They're powerful vessels of energy that we created to serve as battery life to the ship, per se. Think of them as a super advanced charger. Lee elaborated, with Talos finally speaking up. With them gone, we'll be actively losing energy, along with all this. Reaching forward with a cold stare, Talos too placed his hand upon the massive glowing canister, looking almost lost in place. As we speak, those conductors could be taking shape in the who knows what. Monsters, beasts, it could be anything. Evelyn revealed while tapping her sharp tail upon the metal floor. We can track them, but it may take a while given the lower power, Alice added. These conductors you speak of, we saw them fall from the ship. It seemed like they were teleported around once they fell. Are you saying that there could be monsters anywhere on Earth as we speak? Asked Jida, while Void simply stared on in deep thought. That's unfortunately the truth, my dear. The longer they're out there, the more of a risk it poses not just our research, but to those who may be in its presence. The last thing we want right now is more death. Matira stated before she and the other Sparks focused back upon Void, who just stared on with a whirlwind of thoughts. Look, I know this is probably a lot to take in, but I assure you that what we are trying to do is all in the name of honoring who we lost. Core expressed before kneeling down the Void. Like you, we're trying to avenge our people, but in a more biological way, I suppose... You, you get what I'm saying, right? The Elder Spark reasoned before reciting the quota. For those we lost, and for those we honor, right? Taking in a long breath, Void found himself to be riding in a roller coaster of thoughts. All of this, from learning that his brother and his friends were still alive, to having a niece, to meeting his actual god. Now facing the facts that the Sparks could fully return in their prime one day? It made him feel overwhelmed. For the first time in a long time, Void needed some time to just... think. Kor, this is a lot, man. Uh, you think maybe we could just talk somewhere else? Void asked, with Shida butting in. Hey, I mean, Aurora is hosting their annual Christmas fair this evening. Maybe we can all go and just be loosey-goosey for a few hours, you know? Jada suggested, making Sika perk up. Christmas fair? She exclaimed with wide red eyes. Y yeah, it's a fun time. A little holiday festivity that the city does every year. If you'd be interested, I'd- Yes! Kor cut in with a smile. I'd love- we'd love that. What do you say, Joby? Want to go to a Christmas fair? Kor asked to his little one. What's Christmas? The sparklet asked, with Gluppy spilling in her arms. Oh, uh, you have no idea. <laughs> Sia giggled while taking Joby from Kor. I don't? The tiny spark replied with a tilt in her head. Is it alright if we can come too? We won't get in the way. We just need some time too, we suppose. Harmony asked as her, Lee, Atlas, and Evelyn approached the group. Of course, if you so wish, that, that's fine. More the merrier. Ford replied while Talos, Matira, and Cogson stood back near the vat. Go forth, little ones. We'll stay here and fix what we can. You all deserve a break. With a flick of her wrist, Matira opened up a golden portal that led back out to the world. Nodding their heads, Void, with Kor placing an arm around his shoulder, left with the others in tow, all with a curious mindset and a plethora of remaining questions. Tis the season for some plot twists, fa la 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 la. Harmony sang as the portal closed behind them all with a flash.
Well, that's not what I was expecting off today, but it was certainly a welcome surprise. Coxon stated before standing tall and clicking upon a computer connected to the matter vat. Neither did I. Talos added with a continuous tone of dryness, all up to a ping alerted upon the massive matter holder's control pad. All turning, the three sparks were alerted to a holographic diagram of the world they were stationed within. Earth, it said in spark text, however, spell without the A. Next to it, glowing with a yellow shimmer, was the words M detector, estimation 98% positive, light matter and dark matter. As the sparks read those words, all three of their eyes widened in shock. By Matera, it, you. Cogson gasped as a new hologram appeared, showing a set of recently recorded files. With one of the conductors back in the reformatter, it allowed for its internet and data to hop back online, giving the sparks a rundown of what was important. Ah, there they are. Still on the planet, but scattered. Cogson shouted as he adjusted his glasses and read the list of words and notes that came on through. Fascinating. It appears I left the planet, but were pulled right back into its orbit. Hmm. I'm going to go run some tests. Talos groffed aloud before turning and marching into one of the labs with multiple sets of sharp cracks below him. This world. The M ratings are off the charts. Talos, wait for me, dear boy. Coxon pleaded as he too made a hard dash for the labs, while Matera slowly approached the glowing energies with a stunned eye. Raising her left hand up, she began to scratch the bottom of her mechanical chin, all before saying one last thing to herself. Immaculate. I don't believe it.